was, but I'm going to say it was three times as the charm. Good morning, Crossroads Church. Thank you for being here. Whether you're a regular, whether you're here for the first time, or maybe you just said yes to an invite that you received from someone who attends here, thank you for coming. You see, invitations are important. I mean, how many of us would have not been here had someone not invited us? You see, it reminds me of Jesus. Jesus had 12 disciples. And they became his disciples because Jesus said, follow me. You see, he gave them an invitation. But what's more important, or just as important as the invitation, is the response. You see, the disciples' lives were forever changed because they said yes to an invitation. Millions of people's lives have been changed because they said yes to an invitation. And this morning, it's my hope that some of your lives will be changed because you said yes to an invitation. You see, the beginning of change, the beginning of transformation, the beginning of hope starts by saying yes. Saying yes to something that maybe you normally wouldn't. Saying yes to something because maybe you just felt led to. Saying yes to something because maybe you didn't have the heart to tell somebody no. So what is it this morning that can be so life-changing life changing that is worth saying yes to? You see, my first introduction to this church was back in 2019, and I sat right over there about three rows back. It was the first time I've ever been here. I didn't know very many people, but I was invited by a church member. I was invited to a friend's and family day. And I'm glad I said yes to that, because remember, saying yes to things is important. And I had thought that my yes was for a friend's and family day. But it wasn't. What I found out was my yes for was what I heard next. You see, Pastor Ronnie was preaching that morning, and during his sermon, he shared a love letter that was sent to him from his wife, Miss Carrie, while he was serving overseas in Afghanistan. And I don't remember much about that letter now, but what I do remember is how much she loved him. And then I thought, it must be nice. That must be nice to be loved like that. And no sooner than the, that thought entered my mind, and then Pastor Ronnie held this Bible up just like this, and he said, what do you think that this is? It's the greatest love letter ever written. And it was written to all of us. And if we look at this book as a list of things that you can and cannot do, if we look at this book to gauge how good or bad of a person we are, then you've missed it. You see, my father Frank is here this morning. I couldn't ask for a better dad. My dad has been at every corner that I've turned in my life. But I also can remember all the whoopings and all the groundings. And the lectures. But you see, if I don't get that story correct, if I take my life experience with my father out of context, then I, out of context, then I would have missed it, church. My dad did everything that he did because he really, really loves me. And I'm up here this morning to tell you that God loves you. And he loves you so much, he did something you would never do. He sacrificed his one and only son to save you and to save me. And he didn't have to do it. And then he wrote you a love letter, the Bible. And he, he did that to help guide you along the way. And remind you that instead of looking at how good or bad we are, instead of focusing on all the what to do's and what not to do's, that God is really just focused on how good his son is. And God is focusing on who loves His Son and whether or not we put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ because who Jesus is and what Jesus has done 
is love. All of it is love for all of us. For you and for me. And that is what's worth saying yes to this morning. So this morning as we can continue in worship, let's worship in a way that we let Jesus Christ know that we love him back. Amen.